What's happening, musicians? Matt Vanacoro here with my friends at Gig Performer. And today I'm going to show you how to use Gig Performer 4 to tie it all together in terms of your sound design. When we're doing sound design, we're talking about taking the best parts of a variety of different instruments and plugins, but tying them all together in a unified interface with Gig Performer 4 and taking a look at how you can mix and match the best sounds, the best features, and really make your workflow excellent for playing live. So we've all had to do it, right? I'm taking a look right now. I've got a nice orchestral patch ready to roll and it's three quarters of the way there. I saved the last quarter for you guys to check out. Now we've all had to do it, right? As a keyboard player, um, I one of the things I do, I play a lot with my friend Mark Wood, who is a sort of a rock orchestra guy. So everything we're doing has a big orchestral sound to it. Now, as a, to borrow the old Victor Borga joke, you know, this uh, next song calls for a 75 piece orchestra, but unfortunately due to budget cutbacks, we're about 74 pieces too short. So that's happened to all of you. I'm sure you're as a keyboard player, as a touring musician, you've got to cover so much stuff. So let's look at how to do that and how to really tweak it and guess the best sound out of it. So if you take a look at this patch I've got right here, I'll show you what's going on with it. I've got a strings instrument, brass, and timpani set up. Let's go to the wiring and take a look behind the hood. Three different MIDI blocks. I'll tell you why in a second. Triggering three different instruments. It looks nice and neat though, right? Easy to see. This MIDI block is the strings MIDI triggering the strings, brass MIDI triggering a brass instrument, and the timpani MIDI triggering a timpani instrument. So all I do is double click any of those instruments and the screen will open up and I can go in and work on it uh, if I want to. All of those instruments are going to an audio mixer. Nice little eight channel audio mixer. I'm only using six channels of it. You'll see I've got pan for every single channel and I've already labeled them strings, brass, and timpani. So later on, I don't have to worry if I'm raising the volume and trying to assign something to a parameter, it's not gonna have a weird name. It's not gonna say like contact VSL strings patch three. It's just gonna say that's your strings volume. That's one of the reasons I love routing everything to the audio mixer. It really cleans everything up in addition to giving you the flexibility to mix. And then that audio mixer is going out to my audio interface. So now let's look at the front panel. So on the front, I've got these three widgets, strings, brass, and timpani, nice little dials already mapped to the volume. So let's test it out. If I take the brass, bring the brass volume down, you can only hear strings. Bring the brass back up. Excellent, so there we go. And same with the strings, that's already mapped. Okay, and finally I got some timpani in there if I play low enough. And that brings up why I've got a couple of different MIDI blocks. Every single one of these MIDI blocks is dividing up my Omni MIDI input into a different region of the keyboard so that these three instruments are not intersecting over each other. Now, some of you might say, well, you can just do that inside of Contact or inside of UVI Workstation, whatever you're using. Yes, you can, but then when you swap that out, let's say I don't like that brass sound and I decide for another sound, to swap in a different brass instrument, I don't have to redo all that work again. You know, I don't have to go back in and change all the keyboard mapping. No, I've got the keyboard mapping done now. I know that my brass generally, I don't want to have my brass all the way down in the basement. I want the brass to exist somewhere in the middle to the top. I know that in this case, my strings, I want them to end in the middle and not play in the top because when I'm playing that Led Zeppelin song with uh, my orchestral friends, we're going to want to not have strings interfering with that. Now you can go in and edit your articulations as you like too. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and throw on the sustained articulation for the brass so that I can nice and get that nice rounded out sustained brass sound. So everything's good to go. This is a great orchestral general patch. And one of the things I can do since I've got the mixer controls mapped to the front, I can go ahead and do a little bit of the balance right from here. So I can pan the brass a little to the right and the strings a little, uh, the timpani a little to the left and I can really hit it. Great, now I'm really adding a lot to it when I get to that solo. And right there I hear my first problem. I know that the boss, the big conductor man, He's not going to love that that timpani is pounding away on that whole descending line. 
So one of the things I'm going to want to do is to start making different configurations of this patch so that maybe I have one without the timpani and maybe I could design one that has the strings a little louder, that kind of thing. And that's where the variations are going to come into play. So we'll get into that in a second. So I could go back into the plugin and go ahead and take things out or something like that, but I don't need to since I've already mapped this stuff to the front, I can use these on off switches. These on off switches are already assigned to that audio mixer and there's a mute for each one of those instruments. And remember, I named each of those instruments a natural name. So instead of saying the plugin name or the channel name, it just says mute the strings, mute the brass, mute the timpani. So I've got them reversed because I like to see whether the strings are on or off. So if I want to turn off the strings and the timpani, I can do just brass for that. Now, of course, you know, I could flip those switches live. I could map those switches so that they react to MIDI buttons. But generally, one of the things I like to do when I'm playing this gig, it's an orchestral gig. It's almost like a Broadway show where every, I've got a lot of cues per song. So most of the time, I'm just changing patches with a foot pedal. I don't want to reach up and go turn that off, turn that off or whatever. I just want another version of this patch ready to roll. And Gig Performer saves you a lot of processing power by allowing you to use variations. I don't have to copy and have more instances of these instruments. I can use a variation that will just give me different volume variations, mix variations, and things like that of the same patch. So I can make some basic changes and then get that to come through in variations. So let's check that out. So let's say right now what I've got is I've got a nice big spread out wide patch. That's really great for my general sound, but for that brass uh, solo, I know that he's gonna wanna get rid of that timpani. So what I'll do is I've got full orchestra. You see, I've got this thing that says variation one. I'll delete it so that I can show you how to make a new one. All right, all you do is right click here and you hit new variation. Now that's different from a new rack space. It's not gonna make a new blank rack space. It's just going to make a variation. So I'll just call this brass solo. And if you want to, from here, you can actually assign a program change number. So if you want to be able to use MIDI program changes, um, I know some people like to connect their iPad to that. When the score pops up, it can pop up the program change. So I hit OK. And now I can make my different mix. So let's say for the brass solo, I actually want the brass to be in the center. Hmm, will that hold? Let me go back. It sure does. So now for my brass solo, the brass are going to be centered. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the timpani and I'm gonna lower the strings because I know that I want the brass to be front and center for this. So when I get to that part, the brass really stands out. And then when I go back and I need that full orchestra, And now I've designed this dynamic patch that has a lot of use to it. I don't have to you know, design four different orchestral patches. I can go to my biggest one I think I'm gonna use, my orchestra patch, my big full orchestra one. I've even labeled it there using a label. And I can just make variations of it that mute certain instruments, remix certain instruments, bring out certain instruments, and I'm just saving a ton of processing power that way. So if I want another variation, where I have just like a string solo, I'll hit new variation. And if I've got some string solo work to do, I can go ahead and keep the timpani off, turn the brass off, bring that string volume up a little more and just go right to town. Or if there's a quiet part. And there you go. So lots of different possibilities that range from my full orchestra sound to just a brass solo to just the strings. All from one patch. So I've got one rack space and only three plugins running, you know, three different instruments, but I've got, you know, a whole bunch of different varieties of that. So that's the power of sound design within Gig Performer. If I had to go back and every time I wanted to tweak something, you know, go to the backstage area 
open up the plugin and say, okay, but for this one, I'm going to pan this one slightly left. I'm going to lower the volume here. And then I'm going to go into the brass. I'd like the brass to be a little louder. I'd like them panned a little to the right. Look how long that's taking compared to just using the front panel and going, oh, on this next patch, let's put the brass on the right a little bit. Let's lower the string volume. And there we go. So much faster if you have this all assigned. And then if you want to, you can save that as a template. So if you want to be able to port your orchestra into different places, you can use templates, copy that, and then open it up as a template. We've got a great video showing you how to do that as well. So you can sound design really fast in Gig Performer 4. It's an excellent way to approach getting all the sounds you need on the keyboard.